Hey everyone, my name is Travis, and today we are going to be using Tinkercad to create a house. The first thing we want to do is change the name. The silly name will be replaced with my name and the word house to stay organized. And the first design element we're going to use, the first shape we're going to use, is a box. I'm going to take the box and put it out on the work plane. This video, we're going to assume you know where everything is and how to navigate around. We're just going to get right to creating the house with some tips for beginner students. So once I put the box on the ground, we want to change the house and make it a little bit bigger. So instead of having it be 20 by 20, I'm going to make mine 30 by 45. Yours can be bigger or smaller. I just want you to use the same sh shapes that I'm using. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a roof. We could use, speaking of different shapes, we have a few different roof shapes that we could choose from. And if this is your first time or second time using Tinkercad, I recommend using this the same shape. Otherwise, you can experiment with other ones. I'm going to use the green roof. I'm going to put it on top. And you can see, I accidentally, this is a good learning moment, I accidentally clicked a little bit beyond the top, so it went on the ground. I can use the cone to lift it up, but I'm, I'm going to just undo that. I'm going to take the roof, and I'm going to make sure this time it actually goes on top of the house, and I'm going to expand it. I can use the numbers on the side and just click on the numbers to make sure that I get the accurate size that I want. Again, we're doing 30 by 45. Now, if I look around, you can see that it's not totally on top. I can click my arrows on the keyboard, and that'll help align. But if you're using an iPad, you're not really able to do that. I would recommend selecting both of them, going to align, and then using the middle buttons. The middle buttons are going to make sure that your shape is placed um, relative to the other one in the middle, which will basically line everything up for you. If I did this one, it's going to line it up vertically in the middle, which is not what we want. We want the roof to stay on top. Lovely. So now we're going to place a box shaped hole on the ground and scale it to be a door. I'm going to hit the home view and then I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to take the box here. And this one's interesting. I can put it on the front, but I'm going to put it on the ground. And I'm going to make it smaller. Keep in mind, when we're 3D printing, normally we only have one color. So we want to um, have things pushed in or pushed out. We want them to be 3D in order to see them. So I want this door, depending on the door size, that's sort of going to make the scale of your home, right? If I make the door this big, this looks more like um, a small um, a small building. But if I make the door, the front door, this big, then the home looks a lot bigger. Now, I'm going to take this box and push it in just a little bit. If I push it in too much, I'm going to make something more like a hallway. And I'll show you as an example. So I'm going to group this, and you can see I made a hallway. So I'm going to undo that. And I just wanted to push in just a little bit, just like just like that, one or two um, millimeters, or three. I'm going to group that, and now I've got my door. you notice the colors change. The colors in some way don't really matter. Um, most of the time, you're 3D printing in one color. If you do have a multicolor printer, the colors can matter. If you uh, export as an OBJ, um, the colors will actually go into uh, the slicer. Now, I want to make a ground for my house before I start adding too many other elements. There are different ways. There are always different steps for this. You could have done that first. Um, I could keep designing the house and then add the ground later. But I'm going to add the ground before I get to go too much further. 
Mine's going to be too tall. You don't really want it to be less than two because if you scale this down and it becomes too thin, it won't be printable. And for the sake of keeping my design organized, I'm going to make the ground green. I'm going to lift the house by two by clicking on the cone and lifting it up twice. For beginner students, sometimes we just skip that part. Um, makes just a small difference. Skipping the part of raising it to be perfectly on the ground. All right. Now we have our door, we've got the ground, and we have our roof. What else? We got some things that are missing here. Um, a chimney. Normally I actually do the chimney before I do the door. It's a little bit easier. If you take the box and you put it on the roof though, it's gonna be tilty. So you want it to be on the ground, on the work plane or on the ground. We're gonna make it smaller. And then we're gonna lift it up and push it into the house. The top of the chimney, if you want to be accurate, should be taller than the roof line. So there's the chimney. Time to add windows. Windows for new students to take your guide can be a little challenging, but it's a great step to learning more. So similar to the door, we're gonna use a box hole and we're gonna put it on the ground. And again, we're gonna make it smaller. However, this time we do need to raise it. Most windows don't start on the ground. Now, making a window your, your house can arguably just have one door, but a house with one window, it's going to look a little sad. And we can keep making more windows and making them smaller by using, you know, dragging out a box. But instead of that, we're going to use the window that we just made, and then we're going to go up here to duplicate, click on duplicate, and move our mouse or uh, the arrow, and we have another one. If I click on duplicate again, it's actually going to add another one in right afterwards in a similar area or similar spacing. If I clicked on anything before duplicate, or if I should say before I hit repeat the for after the first duplicate, then it wouldn't work. That's a little bit of an advanced technique that during this build, if I'm with new students, I, I wouldn't show them yet. But sometimes it does happen and they may be curious. Now, I can duplicate another one and bring it to the side, what would that what would that require? I can just push it in, actually. That would be a pretty neat window. But let's say on the other side, I want to have a similar sized window. I'm going to have to use the angle, which may be the first time for some students if this is their first or second design. I'm going to hit duplicate again. Oh, and it did that repeat trick. So this time I don't want that. So I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to click on the the one on the side that I want to alter and hit duplicate again. And then I'm going to, oops, made a mistake. So I'm just going to hit undo, which is this arrow here. And then I dragged it out. All right, great. Now, this looks lovely. Um, I can group the whole thing together, but if I want to still be able to move the house on the ground, I have to duplicate everything without selecting the ground and then I could still move it around. Now, one of the easiest things to add to your, to your home um, is a garage. Normally I put it right on the side, but I added these lovely windows. So we're gonna add a garage to the back. I'm gonna add a square to the ground. I'm gonna make sure it's pushed into the house and I'm gonna make it longer. And then I'm gonna take a box, hole, add it to the ground, make it a little bit less tall, Push it in. Ooh, this gives us an opportunity for, for a nice door. So I'm going to make a second door. So I'm going to select these three. Actually, I'm going to select everything up here, group it together, and voila. Now it's time first to add some elements outside the house. So there's a lot of different things that we could do. We could add a driveway, we could add plants, we can add a, a pool, we can add a, a second 
second floor. Um, let's do most of that. So driveway, there's a lot of ways to do this. Today we're gonna st stick within basic shapes. So I'm gonna take a box and I'm gonna put it in front of the driveway and I'm just gonna lift it one. I'm gonna connect it and have it go out to the edge of the property. <laughs> and there's the driveway. Now what here could be a plant? We can make trees. Trees are a little bit hard to, to print though, to 3D print. So bushes are a lot easier and we have a paraboloid. If you make it green, it's definitely gonna look more like a plant or a bunch of bushes. Oh, I just scaled that down by selecting shift while I scale down and maintain the shape. If you're on an iPad, that is possible. It's a little bit harder to do, in which case you would just do one dimension and then the other. Now I'm going to place these in front of the house. I'm going to use our duplicate tree trick. I hit it a few times, so I get a few of them. When you duplicate something, it just makes another one um, in the same spot. So when I hit duplicate a bunch of times there, it's just making a bunch. And you, you, mean it, you can't tell unless you click there and, and move it. And if you ever make a mistake, you have undo. It's a lovely button. You have some bushes of different sizes. All right, what else did we say? A pool. Uh, oh, wait, look, in the back. Oh, we could make like a deck with the pool. Um, but let's just, let's just do a pool. Now, there's a lot of ways to do everything I've been doing. Uh, this is art. Even in engineering, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. But today, I'm going to use um, a pretty simple technique. I'm going to grab a tube. I'm going to put it on the ground and I stretched it, which makes it like a little oblong, but that's okay. And then I'm going to make it less tall. So it's just like a little lip. And then I'm going to add an insert into the bottom. So it doesn't just look like there's, there's ground there. Um, now again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And sometimes, you know, the water goes underneath. You can do that. You can cut into the ground, but we only have two millimeters. So um, we're not going to do that. And I know I say colors don't matter, but just for fun, we're going to make that blue. And why don't, you know, why don't we do the, the porch idea? So I'm going to grab a box. I'm going to put it in between the home and the pool, and I'm going to squish it down and make sure it doesn't go into the pool. And I'm pretty happy with that. You could also add a door here. So I'm gonna make this wider and I'm gonna push it out. You could notice that right now, it's not really that gray where it touches the house. But if I go in one more, it turns darker. That's a good sense of how far you pushed in. And then I'm gonna select both to group it. And that one's in just one millimeter. So you'll notice it when it prints. Lovely. So why don't we make a dog house? So I'm going to take a box, make it smaller. And I'm going to add a little roof on it. And then this one's going to have a unique door. We're going to end with something a little bit advanced. So this is real small. It's a little bit difficult for me to get it aligned. So I'm going to use the align tool. I'm going to use the middle button there and the middle button there. And it's a little bit smaller, but that's OK. It's already aligned. So if I use the black nodes to make it bigger or smaller it shouldn't it's gonna be easier to make sure that it stays stays aligned i still have the back a little bit off ah interesting so i've got a weird number here i'm gonna just change that to 11 that'll fix our problems all right now i'm gonna group these together and we it's a little big i'm gonna make it a little bit smaller now the door 
or the opening for the dog. I want that to be unique. I want it to be an arched entry. So we're going to take a box hole. And then on top of that, we're going to take this round roof. And we're going to add that on top of the box hole. We're spinning that 90 and making a hole. You can make any shape of hole. And now we're going to make sure that both of these are selected. We're going to hit Align. And again, align them up. Group it so it's one shape. And then I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to push it in. I'm going to use the tricks that we've learned with scaling and aligning to make sure that it looks good. Oops. <laughs> And this is one where I can push it in more so it looks like an opening. And there we go. I think this is a lovely beginner home. These are great projects because homes come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. And you could even make different buildings. Like depending on where you come from, a home looks different. Um, you may want to make a tower, an apartment building. Uh, it could be all sorts of different buildings. Thanks for using Tinkercad with me. I hope you guys had fun. If you want to see more tutorials, you can visit our YouTube. And we also have a lot of curriculum on our website, makeinspires.com. Thanks.